Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Strategic Command World War One, episode number 12. I intentionally wanted to load up so that we could see the number of units we defeated. The fighters, one, two, three, four corps, um, a detachment, an artillery, Russian corps. Um, the Queen Elizabeth dreadnought was sunk. Amazing. That's like an amazing dreadnought. And then one last one I didn't catch. And we captured two French towns, Cain and Epinal, and Pristina in Serbia, and Kutno in Russia. Very, very impressive turn. And as far as this artillery goes, I was trying to think where would this artillery fit in best. And despite the fact that this is where I would expect trench warfare to really be fought, because of the, excuse me, um, I don't know how else to say it other than to say because of the really <laughs> magnificent success we've had on the West, I think this has to go to the East. And I know that I was talking about a, a pincer to try to cut off this whole force in between Siedlitz and uh, Brest-Litovsk, but I don't know if it will actually happen. We may, in fact, have better success just by plowing through the middle, just slowly, I mean, trench warfare. We might have better success just using the Russians' poor morale against them. And we have two amazing commanders here, both, um, um, both Ludenberg, or what's his name? <laughs> Von Hindenburg, <laughs> with Ludendorff in tow, and Von Mackelson. These are both very, very good. Now, I think I'm gonna be leaving this artillery here next turn uh, just to reinforce it fully up to 10. We may even want this to come over here and help support in the defensive areas, but I really feel like we could break out and I don't know. I, I've seen the historical gamer, for those of you who don't know, somehow haven't been following. THG has been doing his own playthrough where he went to Russia first and I haven't been following it lately. I lost it around June 1915, so still we're a few months behind him where I last saw him. Um, and yeah, I think that we do need to start preparing for being at war with Italy. It's March. It's going to happen pretty soon. And my hope is that we have somehow caused Serbia to surrender by then. And we apparently do need to leave some forces behind to deal with partisans. That's okay. As soon as we did, if we had this whole area under our control, we don't have to worry very much about partisans, they're not gonna like invade the whole land, they're just gonna cause, we just need to leave a few forces for defense, but it's not like they're gonna, we don't need the full effort that we have there now. And then we can really equip this. So my hope is that we're gonna be able to take care of Serbia in time for deal with Italy. Anyway, that's, that's my hope, but I have no idea what's going on. I don't know what I'm doing. The only thing I wanted to um, adjust from the last time is, this eight I had planned to reinforce him, but guess what? I used all but four of our points reinforcing the navy. So he has nothing better to do now than he might as well move forward. I'm gonna move him forward and just entrench him here. Which is not a terrible move, it's certainly not bad. Uh, so yeah, there, and now he's fortified against Le Mans. If I wanted to, I was considering doing the same thing about the Colomea division here, just moving him forward. And the main reason is not so that, I mean, I, I like where he is, he's very well entrenched there and everything, but. Uh, the only reason I was thinking about moving him forward is that so he's in better position for an attack if we end up doing some kind of flanking maneuver here. Remember, this hex right here, this border, is Romania. So the Russians cannot yet utilize that. I don't think that their units can move through that, which means this unit is very close to cutting off <laughs> the units that are at Chernovitz. But I can't do that unless I have some unit to pin them there. Otherwise, they just, you know... A flanking force can be itself flanked, you know, this whole idea of how World War I began with the, the Schlieffen plan and the French originally, their idea was to cut through the Ardennes and try to counterattack and they just got destroyed doing that, but the, that counterattack was extremely dangerous. Had it been successful, basically if we had gunned this, that's our Schlieffen, if they counter and break through, the cutter offer is now the cutoff. <laughs> it's probably a more technical term for that, but... I'm sure you get the point. So anyways, I don't think we have anything else we want to do. All units are done. We could look at the reports, but I like to look at that ahead of time so I know what I want to show you exactly, not to waste time. Uh, morale's down to 51 for the French, so we're probably going to see the Western Front continue to just evaporate. 
But let's otherwise end the turn. At 111%, I don't think we need to worry about morale too much. Germany celebrates the Ottoman entrance into the war. And so do the Austro-Hungarians. And the Ottoman morale immediately falls due to the loss of Basra. Um, Serbian morale falls due to the loss of Pristina. That's great. We just need them to... They're, they're at the breaking point, I think. To increase our strength in the Mediterranean, we could send a U-boat section via barge and rail to Pola and the Adriatic from where it can use Austro-Hungarian bases to strike at enemy shipping. Sending the U-boat section to Pola will cost us 50, and it'll deploy there in June. Otherwise, we deploy this in the Baltic in late April. So it'll probably be like two turns earlier, and won't cost us points. Yeah, I would rather do that. I don't think we need to win the war in the Mediterranean. If we win the war... Uh, I mean, if we win... If we win in the North Sea, or around the English Channel... Mission accomplished. We go home. We're done. Uh, I could leave not only enemy income because I'll divert enemy away from the Atlantic. But I just feel like we can. We're kind of staging to contest the Atlantic. So, and it costs fifty points. That's why I don't want to do it. So we'll do the Baltic. Locust plague has dra drastically reduced food production in and around Jerusalem. Do not act, there will be widespread hunger, blah, blah, blah. Saying yes to this will provide food. And it'll cost us 30. Yeah, I think we'll say yes to this. I recommend to say yes, yeah, no kidding. Medical facilities cannot cope with the numbers requiring treatment. Okay, but we're, I'm sure we're going to do that yes to this as well. Typhus epidemic will be limited. Yeah, we don't want the typhus epidemic. It might even cost us more than 50 points to get rid of it. I mean, to repair the units we're losing to Typhus, so we strongly recommend saying yes to this. We will. Ottoman soldiers suffer as authorities attempt to bring the Typhus epidemic under control. Yeah, that's probably 50 points right there. Now, Italy was not very high percentage last I checked, so I'm still hoping that we have another couple turns. Hoping, hoping, hoping. So, wow, the Ottomans are going to collect 10 points in the end. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't have been so uh, research heavy. Had I known all this stuff, well, I mean, eventually we're going to start making points back, but this is just a lot of things we have to pay for right now. And it's going to go away. And maybe we can even ship some Austro-Hungarian points to the Ottomans, the whole pipeline. As the Germans make more, they send more to the uh, Austrians, and then, you know, the trickle down. It's the trickle down economy. General Hamilton is appointed to command the Mediterranean Expeditionary Force. <laughs> Good luck. Okay, they are taking territory. Okay. Yeah, we gotta get this submarine out of there. I was trying. Oh, naval mines. I think that's on the east. Oh, yeah, wow. O3. Oh, God, this one's really taking some damage. Was it over here? I don't think... I think the mines are gone. To take another hit there. But that means that this one's out of port. Can we go and engage her? Looks like the seaplane tenders are min... Yeah, this mine... Oh, no, mine's still there. Oh, my God, we destroyed it. Woo! I think that was a light cruiser. Naval mines. Where were the naval mines, though? Okay, the French are pulling off the front. I really want to see what they do over in the Shalom pocket. Okay, the French, the Russians are... We are forcing them to divert forces that way. Uh, interesting. There goes the Russians. I think we could just hold, though. Don't worry too much. A lot of reinforcements and stuff going on. They can only get this HQ up to six. 10, 10, 7. Okay, good. So, we'll probably just continue to attack that. Attack, move into Scutari. <laughs> this guy can't do anything. They haven't encountered my other submarine yet. I probably should just put this around. If we can, to just keep whacking at that dreadnought, though. It's so good. 
We're doing a lot of damage. I mean, think submarines. I'm guessing submarines are not that expensive to repair, but dreadnoughts, light cruisers, these things. Well, I'm. I don't know. I think that they're more expensive. We're gonna get back uh, submarine back to base, and it's gonna be like four thousand points to repair one little strength. Something absurd. I was really unfortunate that the okay, it's a one one. And a one two one two, yeah. One three. Oh, Nish is trying to break out now. That was not a good decision. Now they're weak. I mean now we can basically get them. Wow, they are deploying a lot of forces over there. And we see the British arriving. So this is gonna be a hell of a front. Okay, movement. Moving back. Maybe the Russians are... Wow, they're so weak up in the north. They pushed us back here. Just with artillery, though. Their pocket hasn't moved. Which means they will be cut off next turn. Just that simple. The British cavalry have abandoned that position. They're holding one. They're essentially sacrificing those units to hold for one more turn. I don't know if they... like. We kind of joked about this last turn, but there's not really a better option for them. They're kind of screwed. <laughs> and that's it. That's the entire turn. Secret talks with Italian diplomats take place in London. Italy swings towards the Entente. So we probably need to start deploying... Lemnos. Probably do need to start deploying... Yeah. Well, let's look at the diplomatic percentage and see how much it went up. So they are still sending forces here. Oh, did we not put these guys on raid mode? They're still blockading in the North Sea. And now, I mean, well, and now in Scotland. Venezuelan soldier of fortune, Rafael de Nogales. Mendez joins the Ottoman Empire, which is the Ottoman army. Okay. Charlie Chaplin stars in The Tramp. <laughs> Charlie Chaplin. Bread rationing begins in Germany as baking cakes is forbidden. George von Trapp begins his career as an Austro-Hungarian U-boat ace. Pancho Villa is defeated at the Battle of Celaya in Mexico. Hmm. French national morale, morale falls below 50%. Wow. Brutal. It's going to get worse next turn, I'm afraid. Now, they didn't say anything about the things being sieged. So we sank the Penelope Light Cruiser. That is the one. The, yeah, the interesting thing to me is why didn't the forts continue to get sieged? Probably there's a minimum surround requirement that I'm no longer meeting, so we did disrupt. These guys are raiding, okay. You can see the blue dots now. 12 points. Yeah. Well, a very successful turn. We'll get a destroyer and some fighters. Mets fighters, but who knows where we will deploy them. Maybe not in the west front. Okay, wow. Let's see what we have to work with then. It's April. My first concern is Italy. 87... Okay, well, it's time. <laughs> it's time. They went up from like 30 to 80. So we will start entrenching. I think we'll survive at least one one turn. Oh, God. 0-2. Oh, 1-2. One, 1-2. Two, one, two. I think we'll take Nish this turn. 1-4, this guy can move in. He can actually move into Scutari and then still attack. Which is pretty impressive. Oh, you can actually move... They aren't even... They don't even have a zone of control anymore. I still want to do this attack, but if we can go into the capital directly, do you think that they would leave that completely empty? It's possible! I really don't know. It's actually possible... We probably can't assume that, so we'll have to move one at a time. And then we won't be able to get in there. Which means that we'll have to neglect attacking this HQ. I don't know, I'm going to think about this off camera still. But supply of three, oh my gosh, the supply is so low. Um, we, and we have to think about maybe not attacking with this unit so that we can reinforce it. But, I mean, then we need we really need some forces to move back over here. <laughs> I think defending Trieste, defending the, this is going to be a good starting point for the line. Defend here, maybe defend. I don't care about the roads. Um, I really don't. Like, if they want to put themselves here, it's just going to put them so far out of supply. I might put, like, one unit here just to defend. 
just gonna cause zone of control issues. I think I might even want to defend like here instead. Boom. Then here. Then here. Or actually here and then maybe here. So they can't get to Salzburg easy. I can always retreat backwards if they start getting going here. I don't know. I don't know. It's fun to think about, but um, let's draw our attention over to the... Wow. They did not flee. I guess this unit is just... <laughs> it's just done for. But again, I want to make sure I know what I'm doing before I do it, so we won't... I need to overthink everything. The, just, the Dreadnoughts and stuff, all that did end up moving away. So this port, I believe, is now empty. I do have this submarine. I won't do my movements yet, but... And this destroyer is going to make it back home. You know what? This is a movement I can do. In fact, we'll put him right in here. It's going to take a while for him to... And then this destroyer's got to clear my other mine. That means destroyers over here can place another one. So what happened? Is that this naval mine which was used but just not destroyed? I don't understand. Did we hit a mine? I don't think so. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, the mine was down here. Ooh, they ran into the mine which was right here. So which means we can just put one more right back there. Okay, that's really exciting. We had no movement in the Mediterranean except to find out that <laughs> some kind of British or French naval unit ran into one of our mines. So we have one extra mine, and then if we can take out this one, we'll have two extra mines. That's great. I think these naval mines are going to start going... Be, I mean, if we want to be very aggressive, we'll push them very far to the west, like something like right here. Something that, which they can't avoid hitting if they want to move around. Maybe right here, even. So it covers this whole area. Um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, what do we have specifically to say? Oh my gosh, yep. So these guys are abandoned. Supply of six, supply of five, six. The tool one is already at supply of four. Um, yeah, Verdun's core did not lose any morale, as far as I can tell. Uh, neither did the Belfort one. It is, it is low. I think we'll be able to take Belfort this turn as well. So a 1-3, a 1-3. Uh, we'll can follow it up with this 10. Would he, this is guy's low on supply. Whoa, supply 6 out of the 7. <gasps> the supply is good. Oh, thank God. Thank God supply was good. Supply of 6, 7... Seven, five here, so that's not good, but um, he's not going to be doing any attacking. Or is he? Well, we can actually get to an HQ, an artillery, so I probably will attack. I, I'm almost sure I will. We'll be very aggressive. If we have to, we'll siege or Orléans. Because uh, head-on attack, not... I mean, it's just not the way to do it, right? We're going to have our cavalry march... Oh, this is so nice. I'm going to have to first, before we do anything, like, probably drop this unit off, because... We'll detach. I'll show you how to do it. Just like that. This unit's going to move forward all the way to Kane. Kane has a supply of six, but, you know, that's the best in the area, at least. So, I can probably do that movement. I won't. So this unit's going to be healed first, and then the rest of them will move forward. I don't know if I end up buying a detachment just to put it at the port. I don't know how much we can... How much we're supposed to fear a naval invasion of the British. Um... Other than that, yeah, we're probably going to push out of here. We have two 10 units. Absolutely. Got an HQ in sight. Well, we'll just be gunning for that. Probably move two here, attack, and then rotate back while the other one attacks and hopefully does a lot more damage. No reason to move out over here, even though we're not defending anything but ground, but still no reason yet. This unit is much higher morale now. This was the one if you remember, was cut off for a turn uh, just by mistake. And we'll probably be 75 to heal that. We have 563. My goodness, how's research looking? So, command and control. It's going to take a little while still. Uh, trench warfare. So, so gas production is not, not getting that far. We'll probably have spy and intelligence next turn. And industrial. I don't know how much it advanced by. Airship's almost done. And artillery is still a bit slow, but hey, we're, you know, we got to get shell production for artillery to be really worth it. So. I mean, actually, we need artillery before the shell production. It's kind of a, we need both. 
This unit is down to supply of two. Still holding out pretty darn well. Wow, remarkably well. Yeah, I don't know what really happened that last turn. Um, he didn't take any, he didn't take like a, an, a, any attrition. So we'll probably will move this unit forward. I know I'm just bouncing around everywhere so that we, oh yes, we have, we have artillery, hooray. We'll want to reinforce that, but, and this can, unit can actually get into Tarnapol. So he'll probably end up detaching this one, acquiring this one. That's one, two, three, four, five. And then this HQ will take on one, two, three, four, five, which will leave this detachment out. But I think, yeah, right now that core is more important than that detachment. That detachment is just defensive. Same as this one, it's just a defensive measure. They move their HQ really far back. Well, of course, I mean, it's, it's smart that they did that, by the way, of course, but we might have to do a reinforcement this turn because that those are not great odds against the Lod's unit. Not as good as I was hoping, at least. Uh, yeah, this is, this is really exciting, though. I feel like we're in a position to attack, and we will. We will, therefore, be attacking. So let me put my pause in the video here, and I'll come back when I have a plan of what to do. Well, um, this is going to be a fun turn, I think. Because uh, we're just really, I, I guess I was going to say we're really on the edge of breaking things open, but we probably already have. I think the first order of business for us is just to make sure we do take Belfort. Part of the reason is because supply is going to be a bit of an issue. You can see 10, 9, 8, 7. So, I mean, it is blocking some forward progress of supply. Uh, we'll go ahead and attack with this unit first. Three, just as expected. We have a one to four here. We have another one to four. I think we'll take this unit first. Okay, it was a two to four, but I can suffer that. And then O to three. Really hope that is actually the case. Ah, perfect. Nope, one to three. <laughs> That's okay. This nine can move in. We're in good shape here. This ten can eliminate. So you can see that actually this did happen as I thought it might. So the uh, unit is extremely weak, but um, also um, they reinforced it slightly, but um, not enough to save it. So now we can just eliminate it completely. And that didn't give us a national morale bonus. Mostly that's just because we didn't have that one completely out of supply, but they still reinforced that thing only to completely lose it the next turn anyway. I consider that a pretty big win. Um, now I could move this unit here. I'm actually tempted to move it here and this unit here so that we can attack their headquarters. So let's, let's do that exactly. Cause I'm pretty sure, yeah, this guy's actually in extremely good morale, but you know, for it was a 1-5. I think I would have preferred an 0-4. I'm sure I would have preferred an 0-4. Um, we can move this unit forward and that unit forward to preserve the 7 from being on the front lines. We alternatively could just move the 7 forward. It's not... I'm not really worried about being attacked. It's not going to be defeated. Uh, and we can just reinforce it next turn instead. In fact, it has incredibly high morale and experience. Yeah, I, I th and so I'm torn because if we move it forward, it will be taking up the front line, which means it, another unit will not be able to advance as far. Like if this nine is stuck here, he's not going to be in a position to really help. So I think we're going to do this instead, although we will lose entrenchment, but yeah, we're not really worried about defense, so... We'll go ahead and do this, leave the seven here, or even move it into the support, into the fort itself. I don't think it matters. I think that supply-wise, yeah, it's identical. It won't matter. So probably it's better to move him here so that he's on the road. Or even move him forward. I, I don't know. We'll leave him there for now. I'm pretty sure this unit's going to end up attacking Tool, so we're, gonna, we're actually going to try to take this fort, and I'm inspired by the fact that we have... 1 to 2s, 1 to 3s, this kind of thing. So in fact it looks like a very 
it's there's a, a high chance we're gonna be able to take tool this this turn. Now we don't have to be this aggressive. If we want, we can we truly can starve these people out. Um, they only have a supply of two and three. So I think Verdun is just slowly ticking down, and that's why we're not seeing their morale. Um, I think it only regains one per turn, and we can probably expedite that by just constantly bombing it with a blimp. I've preferred to use my blimps against other things, you know, units that we, yeah, even like against Tool, it would make sense to me. But uh, let's just take a look at this. It's five, three, two. So let's see how that. I, I probably could just go back and look at what Verdun's supply was. I think it originally originally was like eight, right? And we've probably had it surrounded for three turns. So I'm guessing that um, the supply is slowly ticking down as a means to. Um, like an abstraction of the length a fort could survive under siege, completely surrounded. And that's a good mechanic. I, I really like what I'm seeing here, if that is the case. Even if it's not the case, they're doing something good about this, because I think things feel just about right, where you know you can starve them out, but you also have this pressure to like move forward. <laughs> so like taking tool, we don't have to, but we want to, because we have a lot of units that are tied up around, so we'd rather free those. Um, I may think about this area just a little bit, so in the meantime I'll start working my way back from the far west side. To me it's just the most obvious thing is <clears throat> we do want to wreak havoc on this. Okay, zero, and we can actually swap places here. I'm not in a hurry to bypass this unit of Renz. Despite the fact that we can actually get to Nantes this turn, I don't know if Nantes is actually uh, unoccupied as it <laughs> at least claims to be on this picture. I kind of doubt that that's the case, <laughs> but we can probably send this guy scouting forward. One, two. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Is it worth taking? I guess it is. <laughs> okay, we'll just do it. Yeah, okay, Nantes was apparently, <laughs> apparently it was completely undefended, so we're going to drive through this region as fast as we can. We might even just try cutting off Le Mans. Um, it would be beneficial, I think. Okay, I want to attack this headquarters with both the units. Let me undo that real fast. Ah, I revealed this. I wanted to undo... Uh, I wanted to see what the attack would have been. A two to three. It's a two to one here. Yeah, one to two. That's okay. O to three. That's better. One being an O four. So o three. Oh my gosh, tours. Oh, we can't take it. Well, the good news is tours will fall for almost like almost for sure next turn. Now that. Um, well, I mean, the main thing is nobody can get in there and entrench, so despite the fact that we'll have to cross a river to attack. I don't know. Th this is looking really good for us. We probably will have to move the... I would prefer to have left this 7 in a place where he can entrench. What's... It's useful to know what the supply of these guys is. Rems, we don't know the supply until we get closer, perhaps. Yeah, we don't know the supply. Looks like we don't know the ones that we're not directly adjacent to. Okay, that's fair enough. I kind of wanted to move this guy back down here so that I can move this nine up and continue to work on <laughs> John French, the poor HQ, which is just <laughs> suffering horrible, horrible losses. <laughs> Defending Cherbourg. And it's really not going to amount to anything, even if he, you know, loses... If we lose one unit or something. If I were the British, I don't know if it's impossible. It shouldn't be impossible. There should be a... <clears throat> what was it called? Forgive me for blanking on the very famous name of the retreat site. There should be possibility to retreat out if you're in a port but maybe if so, there's enemies under control I don't know what it would cost more or maybe you should suffer 
uh, a free attack. So you, you might lose some troops, basically. Um, yeah. So going back to this middle area, which I, you know, having thought about it, I still am kind of stuck on things. Do I want to try to whittle them down or do I want to take it? I mean, when I see a one to three, I feel like that's already good enough. This is already has a supply of four. Let's go ahead and take the ones that are at supply of four, which is actually only one of them for now. So we'll cut these guys off. They'll be left with only a three supply tool. We're just gonna go ahead and take this turn. So I'm first gonna drop this by 3%, it was at 50. Do the scouting and now it's at 46, 47. Artillery does 45, 45, so only dropped it by 2%. I think I'll go ahead and send another barrage in. Yeah, 43, so it's, it's not doing too much. <clears throat> I feel like we did weaken it a fair amount, which is good. Oh uh, yeah, I'm actually seeing a one to four now. And this unit doesn't really have anywhere else it needs to be. It's not gonna be able to get here now, but it can get here. So let's go ahead and do the attack and then move forward end up being an 04, which is <clears throat> really remarkable. Now we have to be a little bit careful about supply. Again, Tortuga. Note to self. This will be a little bit better once. So let me probably attack and then move forward. Actually, I might want this unit to help against Verdun. So right now we already have this unit who can attack and finish this unit off, finish this area off. Oh, this unit can move in when that's done. Okay, we're not gonna attack Nancy and we're not gonna do anything here. So let's just go ahead and finish this unit off. Well, this this strike, why waste this strike? Uh, I'm just, uh, I'm really of two minds. Yeah, O2, let's do it here. Don't take a loss. Yes, good. All right, that was perfect. That was exactly as, why, as I wanted. We haven't even, okay, wow. We have a two to four here. <laughs> Alternatively, we could just destroy the marine um, division that's holding Oxir. If we do that, we'll be able to take this town, which is an eight. And we do want to start rebuilding supply for ourselves. So it's so good to have Nancy. Can you move forward? You can move into that. So I think we'll have this unit move here. I know that ethanol is not really going to give us that much supply, but I forgot to mention, by the way, off camera, I did. What? He did not have that unit before. Did I have the wrong unit? I think I'm certainly out of your, <laughs> certainly out of your bread basket. Uh, holy crap. Did I do something on accident? This one's fine. This one is fine. This one shouldn't just have not the one in La Havre. Yeah. So that's all according to plan. You're supposed to be moving forward. Okay, good. That was the intent. Oh, we're in command range. That's better. So this eight, which probably originally wanted to do something else. How aggressive do we want to be, is the question. So I think I'm okay with us. Um, no, not that eight. This one can go like here. This nine can move, I don't know where, maybe here. That'll kind of save the line. I'd prefer to actually enter the enemy territory, but zone of control is preventing us from doing that. Just because I want to increase the supply line to this guy, because what I'm seeing is, okay, he'll have a supply of five. It's not quite as bad as I thought it would be. I think taking this road would be really useful. So it's a two to three. Hopefully I don't reveal anyone, I just want to check this out. Two to two, and I can undo, fantastic. Still wondering whether or not we should do this. <laughs> I was trying to see also, could anybody get into this? Oh, nobody. Only if we force march. I don't think that's a good idea. The only one who I would rather get in there is this 10 cavalry. I don't mind force marching him in. 
Oh, what? Maybe this 9 force marched in. First of all, if we force march, it's going to take us down to 50% morale. That's not even that bad. It's really not that bad. And we take tours. Just gonna, just the French morale is just going to be completely deflated. Not only that, but... Le Mans is just going to have no chance in holding if we do. <sighs> you can see I'm just really stuck on this. Let me think about it and get back. Okay, well, there is some low-hanging fruit, fruit here. I think we... <laughs> wow. You can completely eliminate it? Yeah, definitely. Okay, defensive artillery. Didn't do anything. Okay, good. We <laughs> didn't even take a blow. I want to see, is this... This is a 1 to 4 already. Now, if I move in here, it's still 1 to 4. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that then. Um, yeah. We didn't even take the damage, which is perfect. I'm going to move, move this guy forward. Continue to eliminate this unit. And continue to drive. There was this idea that we could actually push out the Auxir with uh, maybe two attacks, these two. Third attack, a fourth attack, perhaps. Um, it's still possible. We already have this unit down to pretty much nothing. In fact, we really, we actually could send our cavalry in here. It might be the end of them with only four. So I'm not gonna risk it. This unit's not gonna be reinforced. They have just no points. They have no points to do anything. Yeah, we were, and we're making really, really substantial gains. I feel like it's not that difficult, so it doesn't feel that important, but we're really breaking things open this turn. And I, I know I've said that a few times. We're breaking things open. It feels <laughs> strongly that way this turn in particular. So I don't think we need to cut ourselves off from supply. So I'm trying to figure out how to do this in a meaningful way. This unit can get here. We do want to surround Le Mans. I think that's the only unit. Oh, we could force our cavalry there. Like, I'm just trying to decide, are we going to attack the British or not? We need somebody to cut this one off so he doesn't have a... Well, I think that's going to have to be this unit. We could, if we needed, as an emergency measure, remove this unit from the port. I don't think that they're going to be able to do anything. We can park a dreadnought outside the port if we so want, just to make sure they don't invade. Uh, and even if they invaded, what, we just turn some forces back, we take care of it. I don't imagine there's going to be something like a D-Day. It's just going to be a loss of forces, and probably with low supply, so probably like total death. I'll still have to think about this. Ugh. Okay, finally made up my mind. We're going to do this. I'm just guessing that with the zone of control here and here, this is the only... Whoops. That hex right here is the only one that doesn't have zone of control penalty. So I, I'm just kind of hoping that they're not going to do anything. I'm going to move this guy forward. He's going to entrench because we do actually want him to hold. I don't think it's going to be a problem. I'm pretty sure not, but we'll do it just in case as a matter of whatever, matter of caution. And I am going to go ahead and swap these two units. So... Let's move this guy here, move this guy here. And we are going to try to... Oh, yeah. Okay, that's... I think that's very satisfying to me. We have a 9 up against a 3, that's perfect. This 10 is in better position. So, I probably can reinforce the cavalry, which is... What? Oh, they don't have enough supply. I think that that's what's causing us not to be able to reinforce this unit that far. Well, if they are out of supply, I might just go ahead and move them here. Which will put them at 6 supply next turn. I think that that's going to be fine because we'll open up supply lines for our unit that has successfully arrived in Montez. It's a bit ambitious. In fact, what we can do is just do this, take it, and then fall back. Or we can move here, which is will help keep the supply line open. Let's look at the supply. 
So this will be a six, this will be a six, but we won't be attacked next turn at least. So we'll just take it so that we have supply flowing where we want. And then we'll go ahead and defend over here, and I'll go ahead and have him entrench. Oddly enough, facing <laughs> the other way, because <laughs> I'm more worried about this unit. I don't think that, I don't think they have any other units over here. Well, we've actually have not seen Saint Malo or Lorient, but okay. So Le Mans is now encircled. Another really good turn so far. Okay, so we have this these couple of units. I think I am going to do this attack. Let's just see what this looks like. A one to one, can I undo it? Well, the one to three is obviously what we'll have to do first. Went exactly as a one to three. Now I can choose which one we want to move to. I cannot get here, which I, I want. I would prefer to keep that corridor open, but let's just move here. Now it's one to three. Oh, it went as a two to three. We can move back. Okay, that's good. That's important to me. I will move this unit in here then. He can move back if we need him to. Um, four here and a three there. Yeah, I think this is what we want to do. Move this unit here. You can still move. You might be able to move in if we take that. And the Paris unit. Eliminate this. And it can get in. Ah, perfect. Okay, so we've taken another... This guy did take a fair amount of damage, which is unfortunate. So the question is, do we want to move this unit here, here? I want this unit in Paris. Um, I think this is still fine that this guy's in Reem. He'll probably, I mean, his next movement is going to be to get all the way to Auxerre, since that's a reasonable supply point. Eventually Dijon, I mean, we have all these HQs that need to keep moving forward, keeping the supply to our troops. This guy moved to Kane, but honestly, <laughs> his next stop has got to be, you know, probably Rennes. I apologize, by the way, in advance for, or not even in advance, but at this point, <laughs> already now, for many of the butcherings of French pronunciations, it's just really not my strong suit. Um, this 10 has two different options. We can put them over here, or we can put them over here. I think the, the west side is very well covered, so let's put them over here to kind of lock things down. This unit hasn't done an attack yet, so let's do something. Where are we the most worried about? I mean, that unit is dead no matter what. <laughs> um, I don't like going against these units because they have a little bit of anti-aircraft. I think we'll just... This one against the six maybe is all I could worry about. Or I could take Verdun's fort down a little bit. Let's just do that. Okay, and then move them on this side. The cavalry will just go ahead and heal. Okay, good, so we're done here. Let's back up. We have naval stuff to do, but let me revisit that in a moment. Uh, let's move over to Serbia, and one sec. Okay, so I'm gonna move this using in, unit into Skutari. I don't, I'm, I could do this attack right now, but I'm gonna do this. Okay, it did not, oh, and their capital is guarded. Okay, that's, that's still good to know. We can actually still move forward. Since we already moved, moving forward is not gonna make things worse for us as far as the attack strength. If you're set, at the beginning of the turn with all your action points you do have more of a bonus to your attack than than not but i think that this is probably our best move just to keep working on this hq um i don't think we actually want to move any further forward this is supply related yeah this is a four already so we actually did retreat we could move forward i don't think we will um we could start surrounding that i don't think we will We'll just do something like that. And these guys can actually both slide back even. A little counterintuitive, but we may want to. Uh, and this is the turn we're going to actually attack Nish. It's time. Um, yeah, I guess we'll start with this unit. That one has a 1 to 3. Better than expected. That is a 2 to 1. Much worse than expected. <laughs> we're expecting a 1 to 2, and it went as a 2 to 1. <laughs> uh, okay, um, an 03, we'll take it, and there it is, so Nish is ours, and we can move anybody in, I think we'll just move this unit in, yeah, because this unit, we need to move the 8 where they can sit, because next turn we'll probably reinforce them, uh, we'll move them here for now, we're going to do this attack over here, it was a 1 to 4, I don't know where to move this unit, I guess I'll probably just swap them, if I don't, if I actually move him, 
We don't have to swap, we can... <laughs> Goofy. Okay. Yeah, I think it is good to move forward here. Move that guy back forward. Alright, this is pretty good. I don't think we need to move forward here. That's a four supply. We'll probably move these guys back just to, you know, make sure... Oh, God! Okay, what? Never mind, I do want to hold Scutari. <laughs> Even though it's extremely low points. We have Peck now. I think we'll want to move forward into Peck. Uh, we'll want to move into Nish, but that's going to have to wait until next turn. So... Yeah. And we have a unit which we haven't done anything with. If we can get this unit to the railroad... I think we're just not on the railroad, but let me just try this. Okay, we can only operate him apparently if it's if he hasn't moved at the beginning of the turn. Might be a good candidate for pushing the pack. I mean, we can get rid of this, then the front collapses. The front's collapsing anyway. We could also just walk them up to the Italian border. Yes, of course, I'm thinking about the Italians now. Um, crap, it's already been 47 minutes. Well, I'm just gonna have to break this up into two videos. The next one might be even like a 20 minute video because I don't think I have that much more to do. Um, but I just, I, I don't want to force another, <laughs> try to get things done within the next three minutes and possible. So that's going to conclude this one. I will get better. I, I think I spent like 20 minutes before I even began doing my turn. So we'll have to condense that in the next, for the next turn. So just know that I'm keenly aware of it and it'll be better next time. But for now, thanks for watching. And again, I'll try to get the next video out pretty quickly. Um, I don't know how that works. I, already, I actually have a pretty full schedule during this Christmas time, so it's been kind of hard to find time to compact everything. But, uh, you know, two days at the most, for sure. Um, so I guess that's it. Until the next one, thanks for watching, and take care.